Spot. I'm Robin Crane and I'm very, very excited to have a special guest here today. His name is David Merriman Scott and we're actually here at a Tony Robbins Business Mastery event. This guy just got off stage, so I'm very excited. Well, you know, it's been a long day. Uh, and he was incredible, such an entertaining speaker, so Thank incredible. You. Thank you, um, he's a best-selling author of 10 books, a marketing strategist, and tell me a little bit about the books and how yeah, we sure. can help people find that financial juice spot. I've done 10 books. They're all about sales and marketing. They're all about um, using the web and social media and the internet to reach buyers directly. Um, and it's, it's been really exciting because the first book came out, um, geez, 15 years ago. And so I've been able to grow these books at the same time that the web is growing. And now it's all about real time. What I mean by that is instant engagement. You know, if somebody is looking on your website, they're looking right now. If somebody is checking you out um, on Google, they're doing it right now. If there's a news about your business or your marketplace, it's happening right this second. And most people don't live in the real time world. Absolutely, and that was your your presentation was so phenomenal. I think that's so true. Um, can you give some specific? I know we got the whole deal, but give give our audience some specifics because I know there's so many options today of what yeah. you can do with social, even just social media, let alone direct mail and all the options out there. So, um, and you had a great point just about how many people are actually picking up a direct mail piece or how many yeah. people are actually looking at your well, Twitter feed. Well, that's so one, of the, some... one of the ways that I open the presentation is I ask the audience, we have 1,200 people in the room. I asked how many people by a show of hands in the last two months, either privately or for their business, um, bought a product as a result of a direct mail, and it's 2% of how many... Which it's always been, right? I mean, has it been better than that, though? That's typically what that's it's been. That's typically, which is interesting. Um, might have been different before the web, but since I've been asking the question yeah. for 10 years or so, that's the number I get. Uh, and then how many people have bought a product, either business or for personal use, um, by uh, by answering by by a cold call, a telephone right. cold call solicitation. It's one. We all love that. We love cold calls. It's all one percent. Um, and how many people buy um, uh, an advertisement in mainstream media? It was like five percent right. was the answer to that one. Those are the three ways that many companies are still promoting their services. They're they're hiring salespeople to make cold calls. They're doing advertising. They're sending out direct mails. Then I asked, how about have you bought a product, business or pleasure, uh, by doing a Google search, 100% of the room? Or how about, um, have you asked your friends, colleagues, family members through some kind of electronic means, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, email, whatever, it doesn't matter, text messaging, it's about 80, 85%. And so there, there's this massive disconnect in the ways that people buy today, which is we go to Google, we ask our friends on social networks, number one, and number two, the way that companies are selling, because what companies are doing is they're doing direct mail, they're doing cold calling, they do advertising, so there's this massive disconnect. Companies are going like this and buyers are going like this. I try to bring it together to match the way that people are buying or the way that people should be selling. And this is so huge. I mean, I know some of our audience members are very young. They're just starting out. We have a lot of young entrepreneurs on this network. Um, and then some people have been in business for decades, but it's just, it's so important because if you're just starting out, you need to get with the times yeah, yeah. and be marketing in real time. And if you've been around for decades, even more important because you may be used to those old ways of just, you know, kind of the snail mail things that even though they, they still work, it's kind of a waste of time and energy, it sounds like. Well, you know, if it's working for your company, I don't want to say don't do it. Right. Um, you know, I'm not about to say stop doing your cold calls if they're working for you. And I'm not going to say stop sending direct mail. I'm not going to say stop doing television ads. If they work, that's great. Please keep doing it. The problem is that in most companies, it's not working so well. And most, most companies are wasting their money by doing so. So I would say, let's rethink it. And the way to rethink it is by uh, creating content on the web, putting it out there, engaging with people through social networks, thinking about what's going on now in, in real time, and being able to draft off of that technique I call news jacking. Those, those are the things that we should be doing. Awesome. So let's start talking about a little bit of the, of the strategy behind it. So can you tell us a little about news jacking and how you can effectively do it? News jacking is just one subset of the things that I talk about, but it's a really interesting one now. It's the art and science of injecting your ideas into a breaking news story. So what it means is that you follow the news, 
to understand what's going on in the marketplace, uh, what people are talking about in the news, and then drafting off of that news. So you create a blog post, push out a blog post that's related to, to what's going on in the news, uh, shoot a video, or even, is that even where, like, just the hashtags a tweet. Come uh, really hashtags maybe? can be a big help if there's yeah. already a hashtag created for something. So, you know, as we're doing this recording um, over the last week, um, there's been the first Republican primary, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, everyone in the news is talking about it. Right. So how can you create some way of tying your brand to the Republican primary? So that's an example. Um, uh, another example in the last week has been Cecil the Lion, uh -huh. who was, uh, unfortunately, this poor lion was killed by a dentist um, who was hunting, became a massive news story. So, you know, what could you potentially do, by, do about that? And what that means is that potentially, you could, if you have a story that can be tied to that, now it's important, you don't want to do something that's inappropriate. But so, for example, um, Ty, the Beanie Baby, Baby Company, created a Cecil Line Beanie Baby, and they're donating all the profits to charity, and it got tons of attention for that. A perfect tie to a story. Awesome. I love, I love the real-time examples as well. So if you're not doing this yet and you want to find your financial G-spot, which means where you need to focus so you can feel great about money so you can have the life that you want. And then you need to start looking at your social media um, in real time. And this newsjacking idea is phenomenal. I definitely recommend using that. So we're going to go to a break in just a sec. So again, I'm Robin Crane here with David Merriman. Scott will be right back after the break. Welcome back. You're watching the Financial G Spot on Grant Cardone TV. I'm Robin Crane here with David Merriman Scott, best selling author of 10 books, The Man, marketing strategist. He's awesome. I'm so grateful to be here again. Just got uh, done speaking not too long ago off Tony Robbins' huge stage in front of over a thousand people um, who are here to really grow their business. So you're getting some of this juice right now from here um, on the side of the stage. So uh, let's talk more about the strategy. So the first strategy that David gave you is the newsjacking strategy. Um, give us another couple examples of that. Did you sure. say one about Lindsay Lohan? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That so that's again. a great example. So young entrepreneur, 20, just 22 years old. His name is Trent Silver, okay. and he has a number of entrepreneurial internet-based businesses. One of them is called Cash for Purses. Mm -hmm. um, so what Cash for Purses does is he buys people's used handbags high-end Louis Vuitton Prada, Coach, things like that, and then on-sells them either through eBay or through um, stores. And the biggest challenge he has is getting other, getting handbags to be able to sell. That's his challenge. All celebrity handbags? Uh, no, 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 any, oh. anybody. They're okay. just, that they want to sell. So what he tries to do is figure out ways that he can generate lots of people to say, oh shoot, I should sell those extra handbags mm -hmm. that are sitting in the back of my drawer. I need to get cash for my purses. Right, so okay. one of the okay. things he does is he drafts off of news as appropriate. So um, I guess about a year ago, uh, it was in the news that Lindsay Lohan was having money trouble. And she was having trouble paying her bills, and she had credit card bills outstanding, all this sort of stuff. So he's, he put out on a blog and put out in other ways, geez, I'm gonna buy Lindsay Lohan's used handbags from her. I'll help to solve her money problems. And the thing is that the media loved it. The celebrity media loved that idea. So he ended up getting stories in the Huffington Post and Radar Online and Bazinga and a bunch of other sites. But the interesting thing was that every site that mentioned it linked to his website. So now what's happening is that's of course raising his search engine rankings because he has all these great inbound links. The other thing that's happening is because when people are reading it, they're like, oh shoot, I've got an extra Prada bag that I haven't used in two years. Maybe it's worth something. I should check it out. Yeah. And he had 8,000 people make inquiries wow. um, about selling their handbags to him. And in the end, he, um, he, he made $250,000 from this one opportunity. It cost zero. That's what's cool yeah. about this. You're not paying to market. You're not paying to advertise. You're doing something that gets interested in the market. And that's what he did. And $250,000 later. So that's the idea that's awesome. of this idea of news jacking. I think he found his financial G-spot. He found <laughs> his financial G-spot. One more example, a business-to-business -business example. 
uh, comes from a company called Eloqua. Eloqua is a marketing automation software company. And the CEO of Eloqua found out that his biggest competitor, a company called Market to Lead, had just been acquired by Oracle, by this giant company. So um, Joe took a look at the Oracle website, and it turns out that the um, uh, that there was only a three-sentence announcement about this um, this this acquisition. There was no information provided. So what Joe did was he then created a blog post about what this acquisition means to the market. Now remember, he's the CEO of the competition, of the biggest competitor. So. The Oracle announcement was three sentences. It was like this big. Yeah. And this wonderful big fat blog post that Joe wrote. And he provided all the context. So all of the media then quoted the CEO of the competitor wow. in the story about this acquisition. They totally um, owned that story. And then the other thing that they did was they then sent a link to that story to all of the people in the database. And it turns out that one particular example of newsjacking, they generated a million dollars of new business. I mean, can you imagine a million dollars worth of new business from this one thing? And then, um, about a year later, their company was also acquired by Oracle. Really? Yeah, and it was an $810 million deal. And I did the math. Based on the, the purchase price of the company, the blog post that Joe wrote was worth $15 million. So, you know, you want to hit your financial wow. G-spot. I mean, I would call that a capital G, yes, right? Capital G. One blog, one blog post worth $15 million. And, but I think, I think everybody can achieve something like that. You know, whether you're a consumer brand like, um, like Trent Silver's Cash for Purses, whether you're um, uh, somebody who is, has a tie to the political process, um, whether you're, um, you know, the ma manufacturer of Beanie Babies, um, focusing on what um, what's happening in the animal kingdom, uh, or, or whether you're a business-to-business -business company focused on what's going on in your marketplace, um, what it takes is a real-time mindset, and this mindset is hard to achieve because people don't have that natural mindset. My first job was on a bond trading desk, so I had that mindset to begin with, the mindset of instant engagement, and most people don't. So what does it take to have that? It like, just takes, it takes that you have to say to yourself, I am going to pay attention to the world. Yeah. I'm gonna use this device that's in my pocket to monitor the news, to monitor Twitter, to monitor social networks, find out what's going on, and I'm gonna take advantage when the moment is right. And it, the moment is only right a few times a week or a few times a month. And when it is, you have to jump in right away. And do you find that blogging is better, or Twitter is better, or Facebook, or does it not matter? It really d it depends on what's going on, it depends who your market is, it depends on who you're trying to reach. Um, that, that's how it's gonna happen. And, and there's no right answer, there's no wrong answer. It's about, um, it's about where is your marketplace, what's the best way to get something out. If there's already a hashtag established, um, and the hashtag is on Twitter, maybe you should be focusing on Twitter. Uh, if uh, it's a matter of focusing on something that you expect people to search for, like Cecil the Lion, right. um, then maybe doing a blog post is the best way to go because people will find it that way. Awesome, thanks. So uh, give me a little bit more on just like what you would recommend um, as far as developing that mindset and getting into, I know you talked about um, at the presentation, you talked about really this is like an exercise. So just give a really quick tidbit before we go to a break and then we'll, we'll reel you back in for the last segment with David. Um, yeah, you know, I, I say it's um, the real time mindset is a lot like the exercise mindset. If we were doing this recording four years ago, I would have been 55 pounds heavier. I, I developed a mindset around exercise and how important it is to my health. And the same kind of mindset is required to be in, in instantly involved in your marketplace. It means you have to be thinking constantly, how am I going to be working with this device? Right. Awesome. So it is a discipline. It's something you need to commit to. So when we come back, we'll give you more tidbits on that. Again, I'm very, very excited and happy to have David here and being so forthcoming and open. Again, this is Robin Crane here with David Merriman Scott. Tell them really quickly how they can find you. Sure. On Twitter, I'm DM Scott or Google my full name. You'll find tons of food stuff. Awesome. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're
watching The Financial G-Spot on Grant Cardone TV. And again, I'm here with David Meerman Scott. You can find him at, at DM Scott on Twitter, right? And what's your website? Uh, DavidMeermanScott.com is the website. And then uh, if you want to check out one of my books, it's called Worldwide Rave. Uh, and Worldwide Rave is completely free in electronic format as a PDF, as a Kindle. Uh, and it, you know, if you buy it, you can buy it in print. It's twenty-two dollars and ninety-five cents, or you can get it free. It's completely up to you. <laughs> up to you. Um, I you, like free. I, I prefer you buy it, but that's cool. I made it completely free, which is an interesting concept. Yeah. Making content free is a very, very important thing to be doing on the web. And I sell books. I've sold millions of copies of my books, but I give away books too. And this book, if you want, again, if you want to buy it in a bookstore. Or you want to buy it in print yeah. uh, on on Amazon? Which a lot of people do like. Yeah, I mean, of course like to they do. Then you to... have to pay money yeah, for it. You do. But in this case, we're all. I'm also offering it completely and totally That's free. Fair. So just do a Google search for Worldwide Rave. It'll pop up. But I think every business should give away great content. Yeah. Uh, and most don't. What most do is is hold their best stuff and don't get it out there. I think you ought to be giving away your best stuff. And when you Absolutely. give away your best stuff, more people hear about you, more people link to you, and it, I think it's an extremely effective strategy. Awesome. With that, I will give you my free book too. Since you guys want to get free stuff, go grab it. So you can go to robincrane.com slash free book, and I will also give you, in the, in the uh, spirit. spirit, thank you, the <laughs> spirit of giving away free stuff, you can get a couple free books, and, and read them, please. So, so many people don't read books anymore, and there's so much value. You get to have mentors in your pocket or in your hand, so get those free books um, and learn from it, and so you can have what you want and, and uh, reach financial ecstasy, as I like to say. So it's funny, on the break, we were just talking about, you know, this. we're in this hotel, we're in Vegas, you know, it's I didn't noisy. bring, it's noisy, I didn't bring all the mics. There's some weird music. <laughs> coming up from the speaker um, there's people checking in for another conference over Some here staff walking in and out of the exit doors we're filming on iPhones Absolutely. but what's interesting about this um, to me which is fascinating is can you imagine that the thing in your pocket you can film something like this yeah. and no it's not perfect right. I don't have makeup on oh my god you don't have makeup I, I we don't have like an external room. mic that's sitting on my lapel we don't have lights we don't have a backdrop but at the same time, we can create content in a second, yeah. right? We didn't set this and it's up. Value. It's we didn't set value. this up ahead of time. We said, "There's two chairs. Sit right. down. Let's do it." And so most people think, "Oh, I can't do a video because I don't have the professionals to do it." But you know what? You got one of these. We all do. Just shoot away and make it happen. And people want real. I mean, people are looking. I, I think, think it's so. Authentic it's authentic and real. I mean, there's something to be said about, you know, seeing some very crisp, very professional videos, but I think in general now, people just, I mean, people are taking selfies, right? Yeah. Now there's there's Periscope and Meerkat, yeah. and I actually want to ask you about that because people are looking for just value, right? Well, what I did, what we did yesterday um, um, at the presentation, which was really interesting, I presented at Business Mastery, there are 1,200 people in the room, but I had one of my friends, I gave him my mobile phone, and then he went through my account, um, I have 120,000 followers on Twitter, sent out a Periscope, we did a live Periscope, 18 minutes of my two hour presentation, and we had almost a thousand people live. We're watching. Is he answering questions during your uh, He wasn't able to, he was paying attention to doing this, but, um, but uh, he was filming me from the stage, he filmed, he got my slides in, he got the audience in, and so, you know, somebody could be sitting in New Zealand having breakfast, and all of a sudden they're, they're periscoping in to a Tony Robbins event where David Newman Scott's on stage talking about Newsjack. It's unbelievable. And, and you know what, it's science fiction. When I was a kid, I'm a little older than you, but when I was a kid, we watched the Jetsons, the cartoon. Yeah. The Jetsons was like, they, they would talk about something like this as being, you know, you'd right. think about it, there's, in 500 years, I won't have something in my yeah. pocket where I can, I can communicate on video in such a way, but it's, well, the reality is here today. And I believe this is the most important communications revolution ever in human history, ever. And it's sitting right here, sitting in your pocket. 
and so few people take advantage of it because they're still marketing in the old ways. They're sending direct mail, they're doing cold calls. When they've got this futuristic, freaking amazing device sitting in their pocket that they can do videos, they can do real-time um, videos, uh, uh, chats, they can do, um, you can tweet instantly, you can find out what's going in the news, you can do it all sitting with this this little guy, it's to me, it's just absolutely crazy insane. It's amazing. And and um, I w I just wish that more people would realize what power they have. So I'm evangelizing. My goal in life is to evangelize the incredible power that we all have, and that frankly, so few people are using to the be to the, their advantage. I think, and you can grow businesses as a result of this. Exactly, and that's what you want. You want to make more money. You want to grow your business. Then get to it. Get your phone out and start recording. I think it, what you said is so true. Just about. You know, a lot of people are hesitant, they don't want to do it, they're afraid, yeah. and it's time to just step up. If you are sitting there going, I want more money, I want to have the life that I deserve, I don't know how to market myself, I don't know what to do, well, pick up your phone and start talking about something that you believe in. Right. Who do you want to help? Everybody has passions. Absolutely. Right, just, just get the passions out there. People will say, oh, but David has 120,000 followers on Twitter. Yeah, but Tony, Rob Tony Robbins has, what, three million? I was like, oh, I wish I had three million followers. Well, no, you have a great number of followers. And I say to people, they are, I only have 286 followers. 286, right. how cool is that? Right. You can tweet and 286 people will see it. That's incredible. That is cool. Yeah, it's incredible. I have a question just about Periscope and Meerkat. Like, what is the difference? And what do you think is the best strategy as far as, like, you said you did 18 minutes. Like, you could have put your whole presentation. So I could have. What is the I, reason for different timing and how to use it most effectively? Because it's very new for people. Per, uh, well, Periscope is new. It's only a several months old. See? Periscope is from Twitter. Yes. Because Periscope is from Twitter, and I have a lot of followers on Twitter, I use Periscope, right. okay. as, even though I have a Meerkat account, I use Periscope exclusively. So there's a number of different places that you can go to do one of these live streams. Um, Snapchat has a similar Yeah, why don't you service. tell them really quickly, because I'm assuming people know, I know Grant Cardone is huge on Periscope and well, Meerkat, the, but the basic, tell them what it is. The basic category of product is that you go, use your mobile phone, to stream a video of what you're seeing at that time. So you could be at a rock concert, you could be, you could be streaming it. You could be, um, uh, I, I was watching a stream the other day, somebody was packing to go on a vacation, mm -hmm. and they had the stream, and then people were telling her as she was packing what? whether she <laughs> should pack it or not. She's like, which bikini should I bring? That's and everyone's awesome. like, the yellow one, the yellow one. Okay, I'm bringing, thank you, I'm bringing yeah, the yellow so you one. Yeah, so you're basically videotaping then, or video recording and then, and then anyone can real-time respond. To yeah, comment. it's awesome. And so the way I used it yesterday, which worked brilliantly, was yeah. I just showed a small, 18, well, small, 18 minutes is a long time. Yeah. I, I did an 18 minute stream of a two hour speech and I, we ch I chose the 18 minutes that was kind of a natural beginning and end. And then um, I was amazed, I, re I really was amazed, frankly, that it was like a th almost a thousand people. That was a lot of people to be. And then you get more followers? Um, to, to take out of time out of their day. Yeah. Um, and so it was really, really interesting, and it's a great way to get your stuff out there. Okay, cool. And just, we'll take one more minute, but just the difference between Meerkat and Periscope yeah. is just like um, where it's... They're pretty similar, but um, again, because Periscope is a product of Twitter, yeah. and because um, I, I'm a very active Twitter user, that's the one I use. Okay. But they're both good. The they point is, work. though, it doesn't really matter. The point is, like, get your opinion out there, and the opinion right. is actually important. So a lot of people are afraid to say what they think or what they believe, but as you can see, the people who are really successful, the people who have a ton of fans and followers are the ones that believe in something passionately. They add more value to their clients and just like we want to add more value to you. So thank you for joining us here on the Financial G-Spot. Thank you so much to David right. for being thank here for and Tony Robbins to bring him here. And uh, we'll see you next week here on the Grant Cardone TV Network. Thanks again. <laughs>